Hello, my name is Stephen Daniel with the Avaya Serviceability Engineering team. This video tutorial will show you how to perform an attended installation of Secure Access Link Policy Server 1.5. The SELF Policy Server installation includes all necessary components needed to manage policies on devices that are being managed by your cell gateways. These components include the SELF Policy Server application, the Apache Tomcat web server, the Hypersonic SQL database, and the OpenDS directory server. The Avaya Policy Server installer will provide a co-resident OpenDS directory server for you. However, you can choose to use your own external OpenDS or Sun1 LDAP directory server. Please note, regardless of which directory server you intend to use, you can still proceed with the installation. If you do elect to use your own external directory server, please consult the Secure Access Link Policy Server 1.5 implementation guide for details on how to create the required groups in your directory server. The minimum hardware requirements are as follows. You must have server class hardware, 1 GHz CPU clock speed for your processor, 2 GB random access memory, 40 GB of free hard disk space, and 100 megabits per second network interface card. And finally, for software requirements, you do require the Red Hat Enterprise Linux operating system version 5.0, which is the only supported version today, Java Runtime Environment 1.5, which is provided by the Policy Server Installer, the Avaya Policy Server Installation zip file, which is available at plds.avaya.com, and if you do opt for a virtualized environment, the Policy Server also supports the following versions of VMware. VMware ESX 3.5, 3.5i, 4.0, and 4.0i. Before you can begin, you'll need access to your Red Hat operating system. You can access it using a remote console application, such as VNC, or you can perform the installation locally from a directly connected keyboard, monitor, and mouse. You'll also need to perform the installation as root. Once you have access to your system, the first thing you'll need to check is that the server has a properly assigned host name and a corresponding entry in the Etsy host file. You can confirm your host name by issuing the command hostname, then pressing enter. If your system is still assigned a hostname of localhost, you'll need to update it before proceeding. Next, confirm that you have a valid entry for your server in the Etsy host file. Issue the command vi space forward slash etc forward slash hosts, then press enter to open this file for possible editing. Make any changes as necessary, ensuring that your localhost entry does not contain your server's hostname and that you have an entry with your server IP address fully qualified domain name, and short name as you see here. If you do not, please make these modifications, then save your changes by pressing colon WQ exclamation point. We're now ready to perform the installation. I've already downloaded the cell policy server software to my server as you can see here, so we'll begin by unzipping the zipped software archive by issuing the command unzip space followed by the name of the zip archive. We'll press enter and after a few moments, once the contents have been extracted, I'll issue the command ls space minus l, then press enter. As you can see here, we now have our Avaya Secure Access Policy Server dot bin script, which we'll be using to execute our installation. We'll first need to assign the script execute permissions for root by issuing the command chmod space 744 space Avaya Secure Access Policy Server dot bin, then press enter. Now, if I issue the ls space minus l command again, you can see root now has the proper execute permissions. To begin the installation, issue the command dot slash via secure access policy server dot bin, then press enter. After a few moments, the installer will present you with the graphical installation wizard that will guide you through the rest of the installation process. The first screen of the installation, information needed for the installation, provides a list of what you'll need to complete the installation. Review the list of needed, then press next to continue. We're first prompted to read and accept the license agreement. After reading the license agreement, check the I accept the terms of the license agreement radio button, then press next to continue. For the choose install folder, select the folder in which to install the policy server, or use the default folder provided. I will leave mine at default of forward slash opt, forward slash avaya, forward slash sal, forward slash policy, then press next. For the listening port, Type the number of the HTTP listening port on this computer. 
This is the non-secure port through which you can access your policy server web interface. Avaya recommends that you use port 8080, however this is not a requirement. I'll enter 8080 here for mine, then press next. We now have the option of configuring an SMTP mail server which will allow you to receive policy server notifications. For the email server parameter, type the fully qualified domain name for your outgoing SMTP mail server in the hostname field. For example, mailserver.my-company.com. The default port of TCP25 is used to communicate with your SMTP server and cannot be changed, so ensure that you have made the appropriate changes in your firewall to allow this traffic to pass. For details on how to configure an SMTP server post-installation, please search keyword Secure Access Link on our Avaya Mentor YouTube channel where you will find a video tutorial covering this topic. For the system error notification settings, we have four parameters we must provide. For email address to send to, type the email address of the policy server system administrator. This is the email address your policy server will send email messages to, notifying you of any problems. In addition to the to email address, we also need to provide an email from address. Provide an email address in the email from address that you would like to appear in the from line of the email messages. For the frequency parameter, represented in minutes, type the value of time in between of when you would like your policy server to send emails. I'll accept the default value of 60 minutes. For the subject line, type the string that you want to appear in the subject line of the messages from the system. The default subject is APS system error. You can use this default subject line, otherwise provide your own custom subject line. Once all of these fields have been populated, press next to continue. For the audit log parameter, Type the number of days you want to keep audit log information. The default number is 5 days. You can accept the default number of days or provide an alternate value. Press next to continue. Now for the use SSL option which would allow us to support HTTPS on our policy server. When prompted whether to use SSL for communication between the policy server and devices, you'll have to select no as there is no key store or policy server certificate created at this point in the installation. You are, however, required to configure a server-side certificate for SSL communication between your cell gateways and your policy server, but this can only be done post-installation. For instructions on how to accomplish this task, refer to the Secure Access Link Policy Server Implementation Guide or search keyword Secure Access Link on our Avaya Mentor YouTube channel where you will find a video tutorial covering this topic in detail. Press Next to continue. For the option Install as a Service, Click the checkbox to have the policy server service start automatically when you reboot the machine, otherwise leave it unchecked. Please note, whether or not you click the checkbox here, your Red Hat Enterprise Linux system still requires additional configuration for all policy server services to automatically start at system boot. Please search keyword Secure Access Link on our Avaya YouTube Mentor channel where you will find a video tutorial covering this topic. For the option Start Service After Installation, Make sure you leave this unchecked if you are planning on using an external directory server. Otherwise, you can check this box to have the policy server started for you post-installation. I will leave mine unchecked so that I can demonstrate how to start and stop the server using the provided command line scripts. Press next to continue. For directory server configuration, when prompted whether to configure an external directory server, select yes if you want to use an existing Sun1 LDAP or OpenDS LDAP directory server that is running on a different machine, then continue to the next step. Otherwise, select no if you want the policy server installation program to install and configure an internal OpenDS directory server. Note, installing the policy server with an external directory server is not within the scope of this tutorial, so here we will select no and have our Avaya installer install and configure an internal co-resident OpenDS directory server. Press next to continue. We finally arrive at a pre-installation summary where we can review the selected installation options one last time. After reviewing your summary, press install to begin the installation. Installation time takes approximately 5 to 10 minutes but may vary depending on your system. The installation has been accelerated for purposes of this demonstration. Once the installation is complete, you can see we can now press done to exit and close the installer. Now, we're still not done yet, as there are a few post-installation tasks left. Let's navigate to the SAP Policy Server home directory of forward slash opt, forward slash avaya, forward slash sal, 
forward slash policy, then press enter. Here, I'll issue the ls command, where I'd like to point out a few things. First, you can see the installer provided an installation log of Avaya Secure Access Policy Server underscore install.log, which you can inspect should you need to troubleshoot your installation. Second, the policy server provides two scripts for stopping and starting the server. We have the start aps.sh script, which starts the policy server, and the shutdown aps.sh script, which stops the policy server. Now, since I selected the option to not start my policy server after install, I'll need to start it manually here. I'll do so by issuing the command dot slash start APS dot SH. Next, we'll need to open up TCP port 8080 in the IP tables firewall so that the policy server Tomcat web service can respond to HTTP queries. We'll do that from our server's desktop by clicking on administration, then security level and firewall. Expand other ports, then click add. Now in the ports field, enter 8080, then for protocol, make sure it is set to TCP. Click apply to save your changes, then click yes when prompted with the dialog box. Remember to return to this firewall configuration to open up TCP port 8443 after you configure the SSL certificate for your cell policy server. Great, now for the final step of testing our connection to the cell policy server. Open up the browser on this machine or any other then in the navigation bar, enter the IP address of your cell policy server, followed by a colon, then port 8080. Then press enter. If everything has gone well, you will be greeted with a login prompt to your cell policy server. If you use the internal OpenDS directory server, you will have a default login of admin with the default password of admin. Enter those credentials here, then press enter to authenticate. If authenticated, you have now successfully installed and configured your cell policy server. Again, it's worth saying one more time, remember that you'll need to configure an SSL certificate for your policy server before you can integrate it with your cell gateways. As mentioned earlier, you can find a video tutorial on this topic, as well as a topic for integrating your cell policy server with your cell gateway on our Avaya Mentor YouTube channel. Just search keyword secure access link to find them. Thank you for your time today. We welcome comments, questions, and feedback at mentor at avaya.com or on Twitter at Avaya Mentor. For more details or related information, please visit support.avaya.com. Thank you for choosing Avaya.